to me, that was the most stressful, completely like pressure cooker. You know, when I first got here, I really didn't care about throwing and I just got bruised up like crazy. So I literally go back to my traditional normal technique. I'm kind of extremist. I've never been a, a joy to coach because of Looking at that, obviously 2018 was a big transition year, right? You had been at the center for multiple years. You moved obviously back to Ohio, but how did you guys meet? And how did you wind up in Ohio? I knew of, so like where we met is like, I actually knew of her before she even knew who I was. Cause I had a family friend who's actually, he's a Catholic priest who was stationed in Canton, Ohio. So when I was in high school, I would hear about this girl in North Canton who was really good at put <laughs> named something Muffet. And I was just like, oh wow. And, and you know, I've seen this girl thrown 50 feet. So I knew who she was. And then we probably first really met actually at a camp. She was in Ironwood camp. We really first met in an indoor meet. She was starting for Kentucky and I was throwing for Penn State. And that was just like the impassing meet that you meet at track meets, of course. But we stayed in contact for a while. She came out to the training center uh, when I was there. She did a little thing where she was just, you know, following coaches around. She followed Art around. And it was really cool, I think, experience for her to just see what we did at that level for a week. So yeah, I was always just trying to slide in, make sure that I was in the back of her mind somehow. Really, I would say after the USA's in 2017 out in Sacramento, that's when we really started talking more and more and more and it started evolving. Right. And after the world championships in 17 is when I decided, you know, that was a point where it was just like, Hey, I'm moving to, I'm moving to Ohio. I moved here for her. It was, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, which is pretty far, like a seven hour drive from here. Okay. So it was a 100% for her. I don't think she knew I was going to do that. I think <laughs> people who know me know I'm a little bit more like calculated and that's, that's not really the move. I'm right. not, that's, a, that's like a risky situation, but it was a gut feeling. And I was just like, this is right. And kind of packed up the bags and left Northridge and found my way coming out to Ohio. I'll tell you, it was pretty pretty darn cold after living in, in uh, California for five years, <laughs> right. but uh, it was worth it. That's awesome, clearly. Obviously, so that 18, you guys get engaged, you have a, what would, for you definitely was a, a down year, right? I mean, for you, I think what you, 20, 2102, I think was your season best. And then you had a, a solid indoor performance, all right, second over 70 feet. As you begin the outdoor campaign, like you said, you, you got beat by one of the athletes you're coaching. And then I think you went to Stockholm, right? and you throw like 19 some. So there's always that element. But if it wasn't, and you just had a bad meet, then I think you went like what, 20, 40 or something like the next day, somewhere else over there in Europe. And so at that point, you're at the you're basically June 1st, and USA's are three weeks away, she's taken the reins, and you have the, the total trust now. Was there stress at that point? Or were you guys kind of just like, we know it's coming? What what was kind of the mindset at that point? I'll I'll say, you know, and it's like the thing that he says, like the backstory of the whole thing. So we went to UVA, Ohio State went to UVA and Joe was like, okay, I'm going to come. So he goes out there on his own, meets us out there and he's warming up like far. And there's, was it line 20 meters? The last line's 20 meters. And I'm watching Joe and he's throwing the ball, taking like one bounce out of the pit and rolling out of the track. And I'm like, okay, I don't know how far that is because it's so far over that line. So, you know, he's warming up like crazy. First throw goes in and they call him on a foul in the front. And then it's just like shut down from there. You know, it's kind of backing off, trying to find the throw. The rhythm completely changes. So it's like the people that were at that meet knew that like something was about to happen. So then he goes to Doha. Same thing. Like, you know, people are telling me like, hey, Joe's warming up crazy. They they measure one of the warm-ups. Wasn't it in the 2280 range or something like that? 2287. It's like, okay, so all these things are happening. And so he's saying like, well, I warm far all the time. Like, who cares? I'm not throwing far in the meet. And I'm just like, well, let's talk about what's actually going on here. Like you're revving up your warm-ups like crazy. And then you're getting called on a foul because they're not controlled and then you're having to dial it back to find a throw and it's like you never get back to any sort of like a rhythm that you can build on so it's like having those types of conversations I think were really important but like I'm not gonna lie like to me that whole phase of the entire thing was the most stressful most pressure just completely like pressure cooker for me personally and I think probably for Joe that was the worst because I knew that he was in better shape than it looked but I knew until he did something that actually counted it it was gonna be bad and it was like that type of mentality just like blue collar just like shut up every day everybody like me him everybody just go to the track work on it fix it figure it out like if you can do it and that's the thing I said to him all the time I'm like listen I get what you're saying warm don't count and I know they don't but at the end of the day if you can do that you can do that so like let's mm -hmm. figure it out and do it 
you know and that was kind of my mentality with the whole thing and I think that just making it a little bit more like what are we doing what are we not doing what do we need to do better logistically to be able to make better uses of the warm-ups and mentally like where are you at you know and that's the other thing like the caffeine all this stuff that he was kind of just like all over the place with you know like developing a checklist of like this is the way that it needs to be every time to do it the right way and I think that that really helped him just feel like okay I have a plan I know what I'm doing and it made him a lot more secure in in going into me to be able to execute when, when she says stressful in 2018 when you referred to that, that off year I had there's a lot more to that than most people know and like I don't mind saying it like, you know when I first got here I really didn't care about throwing <laughs> you know I was just excited here to be here with her so the few times I was throwing, you know, you can make anything look good when it's into the net. But really, when the reality hit was like, you know, January, February, March, I'm starting to put some on it and it's not going. And she's seeing me. Then we get to the point where I get, I'm going to Prefontaine in like a week and I try to turn it on with this technique and I pull my groin, my right groin. And I just got bruised up like crazy. So we're just like, oh, you can't go to Prefontaine and have a bad showing. So I literally go back to my traditional normal technique two days beforehand. And then I throw a Prefontaine. And to be honest, it was actually pretty decent under the circumstances for not doing it for a while and having a bummed up groin. But it was like a rough season. And I, I think people think it was rough because I came here with transition, but there was a lot more factors involved. I went back to doing that technique right after Prefontaine. I went mm-hmm. to USA's. We went out to LA too. We worked with art with it. And then all the way through Christmas this past year, I was still doing it. Went back to LA. And then art, art actually saw it in person and was just like, oh, I don't think it's going to work for you. I think he knew I was kind of giving up on it too. You know, I don't know. I don't want to say it was a bad technique of this and that, but I know I could pull it off. It wasn't, right. it wasn't for me. And I think, yeah, in that transition year, I could have made it look a lot better if I just kept things going. But maybe ultimately it was a good thing because I kind of bought back into a lot of the bread and butter things that we worked on from the start, from the basics. Still what I do today are a lot of arts kind of drills for sure. Mm-hmm. That's my bread. That's I just got done with practice now. So, I mean, that's the bread and butter for timing and sequencing. I still do. But, yeah, with that whole transition that, that year, there was a lot of like, what the heck. So then to fast forward to what she was saying, it really wasn't until after I had that low point, I gave Ashley the reins. We cleaned it up through 70 feet indoors in two weeks, which was like a big bounce back from throwing 19 meters and losing mm-hmm. to the athlete that was coaching. But like she said, I we had to, we called it the eight weeks till Doha because that's what our, our lifting plan was. And Virginia was, I think, the seventh week of that. And it really wasn't supposed to happen, but I was kind of feeling good. But like, even though I went to that first Diamond League in Doha, that was the most confident I've been in a long time. It was not to say it wasn't stressful, but like all of a sudden I started to get that feeling back and that excitement, that that day to day of like waking up and like, you got a a mission and you're ready to accomplish it. Like Even though I know it was stressful for her because she was starting to see glimpses of life and it wasn't happening yet, I was starting to feel that groove. So fast forwarding that into those European meets, which I will tell you that Stockholm meet, I don't know if I could throw 21 meters at that meet just with the way the ring was set up it was moving all over the place yeah like it, it was a lot up and down but i'll tell you like what i always used to tell people is like i know like i know i'm going to be done like when the cannon doesn't fire far anymore. now if i'm like out of the ring and flopping all over the place like that's something we can fix that's something i can fix off of my years of experience but if i don't see that ball go at all and i tell you this i didn't really see it go at all in 2018 so all the people who were saying washed up and done and you know i've heard that my whole career but i started to believe it in 2018 real hard part of this 2019 after that indoor meet i was like yeah they're 100 right and that was the worst part for me when you start believing all the kind of the shit talking so once we kind of saw the ball go even in virginia i, I did tell her like it doesn't count doesn't go this this and i was maybe being a little whiny saying that because i was kind of pissed but at the same time in the back of my mind i was like you know you did make the ball you know there was positive about that but I wasn't quite ready to get back into that phase until we put together the next segment going into the USA's. And that obviously must have felt nice. 22, 35, big competition, you know, a couple of people. I was like, I told you, I'm like, this guy, he's told you don't count him out. I think one of the things that's really important based on what you both said, you guys talk about plan, mindset. And that's, I think, a thing that a lot of people don't get. They don't know how to plan. I mean, like you're saying, you're timing warmups. You know, I, I've done that with my athletes where we know, okay, you're going to have 
have like eight minutes between throws. So we would start running practices like we're going eight minutes between throws. So we're always setting that rhythm. So planning and and obviously mindset, you did have a lot of variables. It was no shock if you looked at Instagram to see that you were very distracted in 2018 in a very positive way. You could see like the smitten teenager, not to crack jokes, but it was like, oh dude, this guy is like love bit big time. But you kind of look at that. And I think obviously working through that when you said, you know, the trust was there and obviously Ashley kind of took the reins. That's a really important thing that people to get because a lot of people, like you said, when you guys were both stressed out, what got you guys through that? It, a lot of guys in your shoes might've been, if it was the same, it was another Joe Kovacs go, okay, our, I've given it, you know, I, I let Ashley do it. We're, we're dying. You got to help me with an emergency thing. And you kind of freak out and you see athletes do that. They jump. I've had athletes that when they lose the trust, that's when everything goes down. So what, what helped you guys to kind of keep pushing through and not lose that trust? For me, a major part was like, we started speaking the same language. I'll tell you, like, I, I definitely never shut Art out. Like she was, the, the thing was, I kind of stopped talking to Art about track. I actually mm-hmm. actually talked to Art a few times and I, occasionally about that. But like, I wasn't sending video and saying, hey coach, look at this, this. It was me and her working together. And of course, like, you know, Art was super supportive of me and my career and he wants me to be happy. But like, there was a point where it like, she was kind of steering my ship at that point. So if there was any input to be had, it kind of had to go through her because otherwise I was just getting too caught up on one thing. If it wasn't that, then it was all downhill. I'm kind of extremist and I know it's, I've never, you can ask any of my coaches in my career, I've never been a, a joy to coach because of my volatility and how I get caught up on one thing and I just, it's either works and it goes well or nine times out of 10, it just freaks out and goes the opposite. I mean, I think that the biggest misconception about the whole thing is like, like Joe said, when he came here, he and Art were working on a different technique that I don't know anything about that that's something that Art and Joe had spoken about before they decided to do it and at that point like I'd watch him practice but like I didn't have anything to say about that because mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about that so like I'm smart enough to know that if I don't know something like especially to a guy that's won a world championship and been an Olympic medalist like I, I didn't want anything to do with like directing that not that I ever necessarily wanted anything to do with directing it what had happened was after that the technique and then the change and the change back to his original technique it was like every day even when they were doing the, the new technique like double cameras on the ring going through the videos every day that type of thing and it just that process of the video the uploading and then the conversations the phone conversations for coaching it was just tough it wasn't tough because of art it was just tough because like logistically it added another layer the other thing was Joe watching video and over analyzing everything he did it just wasn't flowing everybody talks about like me taking the reins and I don't particularly see it like that I mean when we started talking about the eight weeks to Doha so from the indoor season to the outdoor season a two month block like I was involved with the strength training piece of it. I wrote the lifting on that. But as far as like the X's and O's and that type of thing, it was a lot of it was guided by Joe. And if I ever had anything that I didn't understand, like, hey, in this position, this or that, I talked to Art, you know, and so he really helped to like bridge the gap for us. And I'm not saying that we we were doing it all alone, like he was out because he was never like out of the equation. Like there was a point where Joe, we weren't sending him videos every day. Joe wasn't calling him, talking to him about the technique every day. It wasn't like this daily, what am I going to do? What am I going to do type thing? Mm-hmm. That's when we started started, you know, he helped us into that. That's what he wanted for us. He wanted us to take it in that direction more ourselves. Right. But a lot of it is just has been listening to Joe, what makes him feel comfortable, what makes him feel confident, what were the things you were doing when you felt like you were at your best and creating a plan around that. It's not like it's like, oh, here's Ashley and her system and she's, no, we did some different things that he hasn't done before that, you know, he, maybe he saw some of my collegiates do and wanted to try. He's an adult, he's a champion, you know, so it's, it's a collaboration. It's not as much of me just being like, okay, Joe, this is what you're doing today. Dot, dot. That's that's just not how it is. I'll say she did expose me some things that were like new, and I think I probably got excited for that. I was throwing different weighted balls for the first time, really, in my career. I threw it 18 one year with art for most of the year, but I was actually kind of changing up the balls at that point, which I struggled with. If I threw an, an 18 or 17, if you gave me a 15, I couldn't throw the 15 part mm. for the longest time. Heck, if you gave me a 14, if you threw an 18, you gave me a 14, it would take a lot in me to throw the 14 part than the 18, especially okay. in that transition. But I think I learned some things about my throw, and I think it gave me a little bit of a spark of excitement at that point I don't know if I felt like I knew all the tools in the box I had mm-hmm. but it kind of gave me a whole new like perspective a whole new my mind was geared towards doing something different a lot of the lifting that we were doing 
uh, first couple of weeks. It wasn't, uh, we weren't lifting all throughout the week. It was one, more like a one hit in the beginning of the week. And I didn't know how to do that. So like I was expecting to like last a throw on a Monday <laughs> and then it didn't happen. And like I had to go through all these like little transition during that, that first eight weeks of like learning like, okay, I'm going to be fresh on these days and being fresh, I could expect this. But when I'm not fresh, it's okay to just work on some technique. It's okay to just work on some positions and, and work through it. Joe, your mom was obviously your first coach. She was a thrower. Did your mom offer to coach her or did you have to like convince her to coach you? 